play. Game on. Easy to think that the weakest part of his game is a smash. Who has a smash as the weakest part of the game? in the guy in the net and give him that weak one. <laughs> Let me throw up the smash. You exactly. know? <laughs> I mean, imagine if that's your tactic. Okay. You don't want to risk it. Start yet. Back in the hands, mismatch, Filthy. double fault. His brother front left, his buddy, and the man who's working alongside Goran Ivanisvic sitting next to him there. Charlie, a former player, Spaniard is Charlie. He's been traveling with Novak since the end of last year. And his faithful physio, Milana Manovic, front right. Break point for Tommy. Like the importance of the start, yes. especially for Tommy Port in this match, Mark. Oh, if he can get a break up, relax even more, that 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 would be uh, that would be incredible for him. Very well needed first serve from Djokovic, setting up that forehand. You can see the heavily strip left quad. More protection for the thigh for Novak. Injured the hamstring in his match against Daniel Medvedev in Adelaide almost three weeks ago now. Funny thing was, it was seven games into that match. He's just been nurturing it ever since. Fold. Paul coming right in for the second serve. Yeah. 
You know, not too often, Robert, do we see yeah. Djokovic, you know, missing two, three balls coming out in the match and starting off like this. this I, I feel like this is an opportunity. Absolutely. Front right, Brad Stein, coach. Fazia, next to him, Sebas. Mum's in town, second row, top left. Great to see Jill, who came for his previous match. Great scenes after Tommy beat Ben Shelton. Big hugs all around. Wow, this is nervy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He just definitely looks unsettled. I mean, he uh, was Monday. switched on two nights oh. ago, but, but today, right now, he looks a little unsettled. So that's why I was saying this is an opportunity for Tommy that if you don't take these opportunities, um, I mean, he has to right now. Second look at a break point. Yes. Again, that big first serve we needed this time out wide. 199 kilometers an hour. So it's giving it a good pop. This player's just got this unbelievable ability to produce the goods and, and raise the level of their games when they need to and especially on serve I don't think what is it mark you had a great serve is it the fact that you just hone in you concentrate harder when you break point down uh, I, th I think it's also confidence too and the belief of knowing that that you know you've got the serve there when you need to So no back holds just. And uh, Tommy Paul is going to have to quarter finalist. Here's Djokovic. Ouch. That's exactly what we were talking about. Yeah. Cross got Mark alongside me, but caught some close to the action. No, we'll be getting a real feel for what's going on down there is Josh Eagle. Good evening, Josh. Uh, good evening, Robbie. Good evening, Mark. Yes, it's a, a wonderful atmosphere. I actually took the headphones off when the players walked in because it was a, an enormous reception. So full house here. And I've got to say, it's, it was an unusual start for Novak first up, but we know he's played brilliantly and I expect him to be really aggressive. to a fast start here is Novak on return that's to be expected and look he's tried to keep the points short all tournament whether that's anything to do with the hamstring we'll find out as this goes on and also further into the tournament but he's been ultra aggressive I expect the same tonight for Tommy Paul well he needs to be the, the disruptor can he come out and give us something different time will tell Fold. Okay. Talk about keeping the points short, Josh. But, and I don't know if this stemmed from the ATP finals last year in Turin. I watched this match against Taylor Fritz, and he looked to be tiring there in the semi finals. And a lot of us were wondering how he was going to hold up against Kasper Rud in the final, and he came out all guns blazing. I don't know if you remember that final. Indeed, go to Novak. And 
his use of the backhand down the line, Josh, early on in the match was, for me, the barometer of, OK, I'm coming to play and I'm bringing my, my very best aggressive game. Well, it's the best backhand we've ever seen in the game, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And when he's changing direction with it and he's ripping it down the line with depth, depth no one can defend against that. And as you can hear, the atmosphere tonight, he's in good form and he's off to a great start. Boy, he's going to be hard to stop. Two love. Tough opening service game. See how this one shakes out. Ow. Love it in. When I saw him in Canada in 2007, when he went on to win that second Masters 1000 after Miami early on in the season, and when he beat Roderick Nadal and Federer, I could not believe how well he changed direction on the ball. It was unbelievable. some of those linear strikes Josh and just give out our viewers at home a sense of how difficult it is when you are hitting the ball down the line and why well what he does is he just takes so much time away with you because the ball is coming at pace it's coming at depth so typically the easier shot in tennis is to go cross court but as you can see here the footwork impeccable timing impeccable so hard to defend against that type of ball striking We don't talk a lot about with okay. Novak is he demands so much from his team it's at the start of each each year of course I'm sure there's a big review where he goes to them and says how can I get better so he expects a lot demands a lot from his team and he's always looking to improve he's looking to serve volley from time to time and he's always making improvements so it's evident with his start right there serving and bowling so he's got plenty of strings to his bow Changed up the team a little bit. His old physio is back in the mix. Uli no longer here. And, uh, a shaky opening service game. Djokovic has steadied the ship in the house front and centre. Anthony Albanese. Second of the men's semi-finals of the Australian Open 2023. No one has ever beaten Djokovic at this stage in this event. a good mover I mean he's just so strong he's so strong and balanced he never looks out of balance or never looks rushed when he's pushed out wide to his back and open stance he's got plenty of strength and he pushes off for the next one and 
it's strength, it's flexibility. It's like it's the whole package. He certainly does. And you don't want to go down an early break against this guy because if you do, early breaks, the opening four games, Djokovic goes on to win the set 96% of the times. The average is 78, so he's in a different stratosphere to everyone else. Great front runner, like all great players are, Mark. Just talk about those uh, patterns of anticipation. Yeah, I, I, it's one of those players where he knows normally someone might want to run around the backhand and hit a forehand because the forehand's the biggest weapon. Like, he, both his sides are weapons. You know, he, he feels just as comfortable. On, on, the, on the forehand as he does in the backhand. So for him, he doesn't feel like he needs to rush to get around a certain shot to hit uh, a certain weapon. He's happy to hit a backhand if it's there, a forehand if it's there. Always feels like he, you know, he, that he's in control. Kind of two when you play against him, it's like, okay, look, there's no weaknesses, right? 14, so 13. it's going to be a battle. You're going to have to do, leave everything on the court, take each point out as it comes. But most importantly, if he gives you an opportunity, you need to take it like Tommy Paul had in that first service game. Second of the men's semi-finals. Meaningful digit alongside his name. Djokovic leads three games to one. Well, Gates in the house, loves his tennis. Just, uh, wasn't that match in Africa when Roger and Rafa came out to my part of the world, to South Africa, the largest tennis audience ever. To watch a tennis match, I think it was uh, just over 58,000 people. He was there with Trevor Noah to the annual charity match that Roger does for his foundation. Did you ask him for a loan, Robbie? I was so nervous, couldn't couldn't go there, Josh. Love the team. fact that Djokovic is 3-1 up here, gentlemen. I still don't get the feel that he's struck in the ball nearly as well as what he has in some of his previous matches. Look at that. Double digits in the unforced errors already. That's only within four games. Like I said, it's, it's unlike him, Robbie. These guys haven't played against each other also. No, no, no. Uh, there's That's a period it. here early in this match where they're just feeling out, getting used to the pace, the type of ball that comes back against each other. So I don't expect this to last long. And as you're alluding to, Mark, if you're Tommy Paul, you need to strike pretty quickly. You're going to get so few chances. And when you get them, you have to strike. I 
not sure if you're saying anything about not being able to see the ball properly. My Serb, you're not very good there, Bobby. <laughs> I'm just guessing. Geometric perfection. How's that? 99% out. Is 100% in. <laughs> 40, 30. enjoyed that that sliding serve down the middle Offside. As close as the previous one was to that, when he just clipped the line, that one has just missed it. Currently sitting at number 19. Top 20 player for the first time in his career, but struggling here. One four down. how steep the climb is if he were to make it through to his first major final he'd go from currently ranked number 19 on the live rankings to number 15 he'd just scoot his fellow countryman Tom Francis Tiafo back a spot That was you know, nuclear athleticism, Mark. Now, getting to this ball is one thing, but look what he did when he got to it. To have the hands to do that, that was impressive. Perfect camera angle here. 
Look got, at that. Got there with time, didn't he? I mean, no movement at all from the racket head. Great hands. He knows a good shot, and uh, Novak knows some good wheels when he sees them. Tommy's got some good treads. But that's just an indication of how good it has to be to win points against the nine-time champion here. Technique on the forehand. Notice how his wrist is out in front of the ball. Excuse me, in front of the the racket before he hits the forehand. Right. It's 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 different. It's different, but he gets some you know nice whip at it. Some wrist action. Does it actually matter? Is is all that matters is when you the come contact. to make contact yes, with the ball. I agree, Ravi. Okay. Everyone's different, but uh, that contact point is important. I think it's definitely. Evident courtside that Novak is hammering that side of, of Tommy Paul, the forehand. If you're going to have a take back like that, you want to be quick to get the racket face back to vertical upon impact. Otherwise, you'll make some unforced errors. And that's what's happened tonight. The ball's gone in there with pace. He hasn't been able to handle it so far. Sending Tommy Paul from Pella to post. 13, 14. Caught him a little off, but off guard by going straight to him, I think. errors on the forehand to hemorrhaging them at the moment has Tommy Paul and that double break will pretty much seal the deal for Novak you would think in this opening set yeah Robert, they both have 13 unforced errors but it's always when you make those unforced errors that makes a difference Often say when you're playing against one of the greats of the game, they have a set and a break advantage over you. The locker room power that they have over a player that they haven't played before is that great. The aura of the player is such. But of course, you're able to defy those kind of odds when you, as a youngster, beat Pete Sampras right here. Do you remember that day, Mark? I do, yes. It was a long time ago, but it was a night match here, and uh, 
you know, came out swinging and, and played a good match, and um, it was an enjoyable night. You know, this set has obviously run away from Tommy, but he's got to try and find some rhythm here before the end. So when he comes out serving first, he could get some momentum going and have a lead for the first time in this match. Four stairs already. And he's got a 5 1 lead. 14. That okay. shot has been clutch. Struggled in his opening service game, had to fight off a couple of break points. But made some meaningful first serves when he's needed to in this opening set. Ace number five has brought up set point. has started the serve clock before he's touched the towel. And Damien just saying to him, that's not how it works. How it does work is Damien calls the score, and then he, once he's called the score, he starts the serve clock. Sometimes, of course, the chair umpire has allows a little bit of latitude if it's a long rally, but he doesn't have to, does he, Josh? Absolutely not. He has. To, he has. It's up to his discretion. But the big point here for Novak down break point. But what's very noticeable? These tennis balls are huge down here. They're fluffed up so much. So one game away from new balls. If Novak can get out of this game, it'll be huge because they'll be changing new balls next game. that he's only down one break with all the unfair series he's had I think what 13 and 17 for Djokovic and he was serving for it 5-1 that's just crazy this is Novak at the change of ends chatting with the umpire you can see the surf clock in the background was at 19 no more discussion doesn't want to have any discussion wants to stay focused 
Maybe this is just a little bit of good fortune that Tommy needed. Here's his girlfriend, Paige, sitting next to his mum. They're excited. This will give him a second win, Mark. Yeah, I mean, the, you can almost feel a, a shift in momentum here. Definitely uh, the body language has changed for Tommy. Anything can happen. And then it's the whole psychological hey, sir, effect. Between first and second serve. Thank you. From Tommy Paul's point of view, right? Yeah. You know, suddenly the set's not 6-1. Yes. It's 6-3 maybe. Feeling a bit better about yourself. Walking a little taller. Yeah, Focusing yeah. really on the serve, on the groundies. A little more relaxed. Arm feeling lighter. Being able to swing a little easier. Djokovic leads five games to three. And how's that body language now, right? When you lose a set 6-1 and it's probably head down and get to your chair as quickly as possible. Yeah, looking at his box freaking away. What, what do I do? How do I get into this match? But he is definitely into this match right now. And the crowd knows it. It's just what the crowd wanted. They wanted a competitive encounter. Now, suddenly, they've got it here at 5-3. got an interesting here we go love 15 it's a third double fault from Djokovic Josh, those, it's tough to tell from here, but that ball toss looks very low and very far out in front, especially on the first serve. Yeah, absolutely. He's throwing it way too out in front. Tiny bit of wind behind him, but that is not the reason. That, yeah, he's got that way, way out in front. Needs to bring it up high up, bring it back. He's tight, no doubt about it. Possibly the worst couple of games he's played all tournament yeah. for Novak. I mean, if you're Tommy Paul, too, oh, guys, he's got to be sitting on that wide one on the deuce. Yeah, I would think so. one coming five minutes ago. 18, 14. I think we all thought sooner rather than later he was going to rein it in. Cut down on the unforced errors, but Novak simply cannot find any rhythm from the back of the court. Tommy Paul's got a chance to get back on serve after being 5-1 down. Okay. Here we go with that wide one again. And really hurt Andre Rublev with that. Rublev as well didn't look for it. You almost got to give him the tee. 
just two feet to your right. When someone's serving it that good out wide, you give them the tee. the Joker. Stay in this opening set. that has been forged in steel. 13 love. And the opening couple of rounds of this tournament has just gone missing in action. Backhand of Djokovic now. That is the 14th unforced error that has come from that side. about that feeling 14, when 15. one of your best shots is just not there what happens on those days it's uh, i mean the serve's not firing in a big match for you yeah what's your thought serve's process? Not firing going to a heavy second serve as a first serve to get some rhythm and try and find it and for novak i mean i've never seen him make this many unforced errors especially off that backhand side i think it's that's a mental thing right now That, that dispute with the, that talk you had with the chair umpire has, has taken more out of him than, than we thought or lost, definitely lost some focus. Absolutely, and you're right. That's where it all started. The crowd got behind Paul. Five, Gensel. Just lost his concentration for a fraction. And the American is all over him, like he's all over the net on that volley. And could this be a Zenyonta-like finish? to the opening set coming Thank from you. the back of the pack to Pip Djokovic at the post. We'll have to wait and see. Jeez. If you're sitting on that wide one, that one's going to be tough to come back. That was pretty much perfect. Yeah. Nice response from Djokovic finding two first serves. 
some quick free points. more like it the winner of this one will take him on in the Sunday showpiece final Djokovic was up 5-1 double break in this opening set had a, a chat to Damien Dumasoir wasn't happy about how quickly he started the clock after one point and since that discussion he has not been the same to uh, Tommy finding some rhythm off the ground strokes. Changing direction beautifully in that point. That one, 212 out wide. I mean, he's feeling it right now. Fast to serve of the match for TP. It's getting a, a little bit contagious off that backhand side there, Josh. Can't relax in a service game when you're 30 love up against Novak. That's right, guys. He's done so well, Tommy, to, to get back into this set. It was a poor start. I mean, to work so hard to get back in now, to be under pressure at 30 all, he needs to hold on here. He needs to find two first serves. A couple of cheap points, then have a swing in the tie break. I believe he's going to continue to go for that first serve. He's got a second serve. He's got to hit that first one. And set point for Djokovic. As you said, Josh, you cannot afford to give Djokovic an inch, any opportunity to get back into it. Second set point for Novak. Oh, 
Novak Djokovic. Djokovic wins the opening set. But boy, did he take the scenic route to get there. tough it is to beat this guy when he wins the opening set at the Australian Open mark how many times do you think after Djokovic has won the opening set he's gone on to lose the match how many times yep not too many I would imagine Robbie you tell me tell you that when Djokovic wins the opening set at the Australian Open he is a very healthy 80 wins and one loss the only loss against Stan Wawrinka quarterfinals in 2014 that epic match that Stan got him a 9-7 in the fifth which made the effort from Wawrinka even more impressive the fact that he had lost the opening set then came back to win it in exactly four hours so that is the task that faces tommy technical perspective why this backhand is so off this evening 15. not really i think um, i expect him to get better tonight i mean I, it's hard to pinpoint anything specific with the technique uh, i mean he started hitting that backhand beautifully at the start of the match it was mm -hmm. more just a lack of concentration but I, li I like that stat you've pulled out robbie because tommy paul would still think he's a chance Chatting with Brad Stein, you're up and about. That's why he was, you know, giving it the fist, and he was pumped up. He was like, "Bring it on!" And I'm gonna, I'm gonna play even better. That was the attitude. Yeah, we, we know that that kind of stuff just gets him more focused. I think he, like you said, he, he plays better. He raises his level for things like that. It's almost like he looks for it. right inside the center strip The 
once again a chance for Novak to get an early break on in a set. Too often do you see Djokovic the one wanting to uh, 13, have the point 14. end. Some big hitting here from Tommy Paul. Great depth on the forehand side. And they're moving up to that one nicely. Novak checking out of that rally. back points well against this guy. Robbie, I know you love the stats. You talk about yeah, when he wins that first set, but what about when he wins that. two sets and he's up two sets to the love? He's only ever lost one match in his life. Who was that against? There's a connection with your wife. <laughs> I knew you would know. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure Mark Philippoussis knows, though. Tim? Nope. Before team came on the scene. What's that? Before team came on the tennis scene. This guy was before him. to Babsy, Josh. I mean, you're, you got you're, me a good yeah, he's an Austrian player. He's an Austrian. Top, got to top 10, an yep. Austrian player. Got to you probably ten. may have even played against him latter in your career and early in his career. Man. Give you one more clue after this point. Gosh, you're, I can't think of him, but I'm, um, that must have been very early on in his career. Wasn't that beautiful coverage? Fifteen, thirteen. That's some great athleticism from both guys. And this is good anticipation. Look at this. What an awesome angle. What awesome athleticism. Tommy Paul. Electrifying the locals with his movement there. Okay, put us out of our misery. The only player to beat Novak from two sets to left down is Malzer. 
Jurgen Meltzer. Man. Did it at the French Open, of course. What year was that? The French Open, what year was that? 2009, if I'm Oof. not mistaken. Possibly 2010. Oh, spot on, Josh. 21 years old. He was then. Djokovic. Well, he already won a major by then. So it's a big win for the South Pole from Austria. Huge win. It does be a huge point right here now for Tommy Paul. He's got a chance to break oh, back. He might get a code violation here. Nope. Time violation, sorry. It was close. And he's breathing heavily, Josh. Absolutely, I think he's investing so much and you can just see there he was motioning to yeah. his team that he needs some food or possibly drinks. So I'm sure they'll race that out to him. I think also the fact that he's investing in this so physically to get to a three love lead, a set and three love, he knows scoreboard pressure will be massive from that point on. has brought the uh, net into play with that backhand Ball. side today. And Tommy Paul moving up to that one nicely, taking her on the rise. Djokovic guessing the wrong way. to miss on these big points on these break points just like a wall on the other side yes all tournament long he hasn't played many of these long grueling rallies we've seen him dictate we've seen him up on that baseline dominating and as you can see there guys the, that's the magic potion it's about to get run out to novak turn him into super novak <laughs> <laughs> brilliant of this game, can't you, Josh? I mean, looking uh, at Spot. Djokovic leaning over there, just is trying to scrape over to get the change of ends, and it's a huge game from Tommy.
could be third time lucky. Oh, yes. I mean, we're talking about Tommy Pauble. What you can't see up in the booth is just how well he is moving. He is moving so well laterally, but up to those short balls, Tommy Paul, for me, has to be in the top five movers in our game on a hard court. That's how well he's moving, and that's how many balls he's retrieving tonight. Herculean hold from Novak. Demise that time. All within the rules. this encounter 15 touching. just getting tougher and tougher and you just hope at this stage of the match Tommy Paul looks down the other end and just sees Novak he's struggling I just wonder whether he's actually aware of that not so sure at the moment he's done a lot of good work played well but he has to check down the other end of the court That is a proper forehand. That's more like it. Tattooed that one. Last hold from Tommy cannot afford to get down two breaks like he did in that first one. So I don't know if he's going to be able to get back like he did. Just three easy unforced errors so far. 
in this game. Chance for Novak to go up a double break in the second set. Let first service. Remember, he was up a double break in the opening set, 5 1. Inchity closing out the set, 7 5, as you can see there. Please. And that forehand of his, Josh, has been a little bit of a liability today. It has been, but Novak has targeted it. He's gone in hard and fast, and that was the, the game plan early on. And he's broken that side down to a certain degree, but again, I have not seen Novak physically like this. He's Maybe just talking about he's on a bit of a dip at the moment. He has to just try and hang in until he gets a second win. But he, he sat down over there when he's getting the towel. I've never seen that before. I mean, is it is it humid down there? Not at all. It's beautiful. It's uh, it's stunning. I just uh, hard to pinpoint. Okay. Any chance they'll tag a Queenslander in there, Josh? <laughs> oh, I'm not so sure about that, but I just wonder whether, you know, the, the average rally length, I know you guys have stats in front of you, but maybe the average rally length is a little longer tonight than what he's had to play all tournament. Matt? Yeah, Josh, I think that's a good call. Could be right on that one. Well, I can tell you what, there's been uh, a decent uptick from set one to two. When you have a look at the average rally length, check this, five to seven. You might not think that's a lot, but in percentage terms, that's 40%. Forty-eleven. Yeah. Your output is 40% more intense. 40% longer. It's going to take something out of you. Novak's average for the tournament is five shots, having to work a lot harder here. Quality on every game he plays. So whilst he's hurting physically, it's helped sharpen his focus, there's no doubt about it. Thanks for that, Josh. Again, take you back to the tail end of the year last season when he played Taylor Fritz, and he was very much like this with fatigue in that match. He was taking time between points. He looked like he was really struggling, and when he came out against Casper Ruud, that shot there was brought out very early on in the contest, and. He played the kind of tennis that we've seen him play this tournament so far. Just so aggressive from point number one. Just what you were alluding to then. Yeah, I think so. I think with the combination of the hamstring issue he has felt, he's tried to keep the points shorter. That's been a clear tactical tournament long. 13. And right here, right now, with a dip in the energy, he's just trying to buy a bit of time until he starts to feel good again. He's already looking a little better than he did about five minutes ago. But certainly pretty comfortable now, a game away from two sets to love up.
Thank you very much. Central, you've got to try and hurt Novak. Got to take it on. Djokovic leads five against two one. Brad Stein very much involved with Jim Courier and his pomp, and he saw Jimbo produce some incredibly big forehands throughout the course of his career. Of course, twice a champion here was JC. Okay. Been here before. Novak serving for the set at 5 1. No father in his box this evening. Sir Jan deciding to stay back at the hotel and watch the match from there after getting himself into. Got the smashing grip there. That's a good height. Huh? Good up to that one. I think, I think he was just over with that point, wasn't he, Robbie? Yep. <laughs> Just relentless point after point. Chance to go up two sets to love. Djokovic do anything different whether he has the skill set to do so set number three Four. 
Novak's ability to make meaningful returns. It's just quite extraordinary. What was that, Josh? Someone from the crowd, you know, give us a wave, elbow, our Prime Minister, oh. and he's obliged. Tommy's just digging in here. Trying to make it as physical as possible. Mark, we had a shot of Brad Stein in the box. He's coach of Tommy Paul. A potential matchup for you, mate. Uh, final of, with Stefanos Sitsipas. I hope you got your notepad out up there. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a good angle to watch a match from. secret right you just can't 13. sit back and just okay. be happy to rally with Novak you've got to be willing to dictate the play to get him off balance and take some risk you know to go after the ball you've, you've got to hurt him easier said than done but uh, does not make it easy save a break point yes beautiful hitting from tommy paul here and seeing djokovic struggling coming into that nicely and showing some nice hands there with that volley yes. 
never leave the fight, says Brad. Wave of the wave of attack. It's hard work out there. And we're taking on the best of the best on the courts and the arena that he's been the most successful at. One heck of a bounce smash. Best bounce smash for you, Josh. Who springs to mind? Andy Roddick. It was a guy who won here a lot. Had an unbelievable bounce smash. You know it. They know it. A little bit of Hogwarts stuff here from Novak. Tennis wizardry from the master. Okay, up there. Yeah, I'm sure it's a medical situation, but as you said, I hope everyone's okay. Somebody who's not okay at the moment is Tommy Paul, and I can tell you some fantastic research that was done over 900 matches on Djokovic and the opponents he played. When you take out Mark, when you take out the unreturned serves and the ace. Excuse me, when you take out just the aces from Novak's side of the court, when he is returning, he puts 71% of his returns in play. When, jo no, when Djokovic gets the ball back, first or second serve, he wins at least 52% of the points. So when the ball comes back and you're serving, your chances of winning the point against Djokovic are less. That's how good his return is. Let's take in the first serve into consideration as well.
showing the appreciation for these two Thank warriors. Great movement again from Tommy. I did not think he was going to get to this one. I thought this was almost perfect drop shot. But again, finding a way to get to it. Just nice little finish from Djokovic. Yeah, digging into his manual of masterpieces once again. It's amazing what you just said before. It's the stats as far as the return of serve, Robbie. That's so much pressure that's compounded over the match against his opponents. And those numbers go up significantly when you're hitting a second serve against him. It's his favorite shot to hit the drop shot, isn't it? He does a great job of following it in as well. You know, he's like a, a good squash player, just dominating the tee there. A la Jeff Hunt in his pomp. when you couple good serving with good returning it is the perfect duo and his combo is in the lennon mccartney league that's how good those two particular shots marry themselves for novak and you can see when he converts the earlier breaks in other words, if he breaks within the opening four games of a set, he goes on to win that set 96% of the time. Yeah. Just to, to take it one step further, Josh, when an opponent misses a first serve against Djokovic, the edge is gone forever, never to return. In his career on hard courts, he's won 56% of second serve points. The only guy who is at that number is the man you mentioned earlier, Andre Agassi. Yeah. And for Andre, there's a lot of numbers missing. Four years early on in his career, so we're not sure how that would affect Andre's numbers, but this guy's numbers when returning serve have just been off the charts. He's got time to, to hit it for a winner, Josh. Yeah, it's simply beautiful what we're seeing at the moment. But I think just if you are playing against Novak, how do you prepare yourself mentally for the physical challenge? I'm just not quite sure that it's spoken enough about just how demanding, you, you know, the, the positions he puts you in. I mean, Tommy Paul is fit. He's a great athlete. But boy, has he been run from side to side. He's looking ragged.
senior player, Josh, who hasn't got enough credit when he's played Djokovic, and especially mm -hmm. here, Stan okay. Wawrinka. He was the one guy who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. I mean, they had those two matches. I think Stan won one that we refer to, 9-7 in the, in the fifth. I think Djokovic won the other one, 8-6 in the fifth. of proceedings now big time there's Djokovic and remember he was 5-1 up in that opening set and as Josh was alluding to this could have been a lot simpler and perhaps a lot more one-sided than what the scoreboard reveals at the moment Let's go. Times I've seen Djokovic a little off balance 13. there and being stretched. Oh, that comfort zone. That's a nice hit from Tommy. That's what he's going to have to do if he's got any chance of getting back into this match. I know he's down double break, but this is the time to do it. He's giving himself a break point. That's 
That's a beautifully measured backhand down the line from Djokovic. Yes. As he does so often in those important moments, finds a way to get the job done. And those are the pressure points. Novak has won twice as many as his opponent. And the way the scoring system is, really does put a big emphasis on playing those important pressure points well. Had to get there quickly. Thirteen, fifteen. Look at this one. What happens here? Is the racket allowed to go over the net like that? <laughs> is it? If it bounces back over the net and you don't touch it, yes, it is. As long as it bounces on your side first, yes, you can lean over as much as you want. 40, 15. That's average first serve return speed. Djokovic. He's just taken it to dizzying heights. The fastest of all the quarterfinals, and then some today. Oh, that back end is dialed in now, Robbie. 14, that's it. It just took a while to recalibrate it, didn't it? for them to ponder after this one. Questions will be asked. Let first of us. Third set. It's too 
really good. And just a little footnote for Tommy Paul as well. You know, he played well at the end of last year, Mark. He made the quarterfinals of Paris Bercy, but it still wasn't enough points to get him seeded here. Because hmm. he won Stockholm the year before, so he lost those points. Well, it's going to all change now after this yep. Australian Open, Robbie. Oh, that's too good. That is simply too good. And, and the American missed out on getting seeded here, marked by one spot. Wow. And it's, you know what that's like. You can, you can think, oh, you've been hard done by, but... It could end up working to your advantage, too. Yep, and that's what it did in the second round when he beat Davidovich for Kina. Oh. Yeah, when the, the seedings for this tournament came out on the 9th of January... He was one spot behind Botik van der Zanskop, who snuck in the last seed here. But today, he's coming and stuck against superior opposition, and not just any opposition, but the best to ever grace this centre court. The length is otherworldly once again. To one. If there is a time to look ahead, it might be now. I was just having a look at Djokovic's record against Stefanos, of course. You're part of the Tsitsipas camp. And for those who don't know, Djokovic leads that head-to-head 10-2. -head to two. He's won the last nine. Oh. So for those Tsitsipas fans, I'm going to point you back to that match they played in Bursi at the tail end of last year when Steph came oh so close in that deciding set tie break. He was serving at 4 3, two serves to come. He was in a good position there against Djokovic. Let and perhaps more, just a little bit more belief given what's happened now this year so far. Yeah, Robbie, he put himself in the winning position in that tiebreaker, but just fell a little short. Yeah, but, uh, you know, they played again um, in the ATP finals in the first match, round robin, and uh, I think it was a four and six for Djokovic. As you said, yeah, Djokovic yeah. Uh, has the comfortable lead, but, uh, you know, Steph has those weapons. I believe Steph is mm -hmm. physically... Stronger than he was last year. I believe the racket's coming off, you know, the ball's coming off his racket heavier. But more importantly, I believe he's in a stronger place mentally. Yeah, that's good stuff from Tommy Paul. I uh, can't help, Mark, but think back to the very first match that Steph played this season. 14, 15. The man in which he played the third set tiebreaker against Grigor Dimitrov. We were both there in Perth. And he was so dialed in, and I think it just got him off to the best possible start this season. Like you said, it makes that big difference. You're either 1 and 0 to start the year or 0 and 1, right? Mm. And he kept rolling just like Djokovic is doing right here. 14, that's it. Wrecking ball of a return.
He's still hanging on in there. But... Djokovic serving for a place in Sunday's showpiece final. Tommy Paul for this match is effort. No, I mean, he leaves it all on the court. An incredible mover, and again, just showing his athleticism there. Getting that toughest one back, but unfortunately, again, just missing the easier one. Well, since Djokovic won that opening set, he has been the conductor and he has had Tommy Paul dancing to his tune. He's arrived, three match points. Novak Djokovic looking to continue his quest to climb into a galaxy of his own. He will be going for title number 10 at the Australian Open on Sunday. He beats Tommy Paul in straight sets. 7-5, 6-1, 6-2.